Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist. So if you watched my last video you would have seen I've got myself a new lathe. This is a Harrison M300 lathe and let me tell you this thing is a beast. It is massive. So in the last video I basically went over some of the basic features this lathe has and we've done a few checks on that. So in this video it's a little bit more advanced on from that because I want to basically service this lathe. So I don't know how old the oil is in there and the belts in this are really poor condition. So basically the video today is going to be about changing all the fluids in the lathe, changing the belts and probably giving the chuck a good service because I can see there's a lot of brass wharf in there and it's had a really hard life looking at it. So if you've got one of these or a Colchester or something similar watch this video because you might find it useful if you're going to service your lathe. And as always guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. To start off with then, I'm going to begin by draining the fluid in the carriage. And to do that, we've got a 6mm hex grub screw under the bottom here. And literally it's as simple as undo that with an Allen key and any fluid that's in there should drain out. So literally the sump plug, it's just a small little screw there that goes in the bottom. It's actually quite smart the way this carriage is set up. Um, I imagine a lot of bigger laves are like this as well but this is all just new to me. So the oil in here is used to lubricate the gears when doing power feeding but it's also got an oil pump down here and when you hand operate that, it pumps the oil in here round the circuit which lubricates all the slides and bed of the lathe. So where before I used to use some whey oil on a little squirty bottle, with this lathe I can just use the built in oil pump feature as long as there's oil in here to pump that around the lathe and lubricate everything. So that's a really nice feature on this lathe. Happy then that I've drained as much oil as I possibly can out of this carriage. Just got to do the grub screw back up in the bottom here and when I've done that finger tight I'm just going to nip that back up with the allen key. So once all this is tightened we can move on to filling this beast up and that is going to be a much easier process than draining it out if you believe it or not. When it comes to filling the carriage back up then we've got a fill plug here and a sight glass down here. So, just need to undo this fill bung up here. Da, da, da. Oh, big one. And with that removed, we're going to fill the oil up through here until it reaches the maximum point on the sight glass. So I don't think this takes much, I believe it's probably, I think it's about 0.3 litres of oil. So start filling that up. So it's on the minimum mark now. And maximum there. So I started off with the easiest one just to get things rolling. And that's the carriage oil all serviced. So next thing I think I'm going to move on to now is we're going to move on to the headstock, get that drained out and filled back up. It'll also be interesting to see what the condition of the oil is like in the headstock as well. So let's move on to that now. Depending on where you've got your lathe set up in your workshop then it's going to almost depend on how awkward this is to get to. Unfortunately my lathe's right up against the wall so it's a little bit less room to work with. But at the back of the headstock here we've got our drain plug. So this is where we can drain the oil out from the head. So I don't think I'm going to be able to show you most of that just because it's going to involve me being in the way of the camera for most of it. But I'm just going to drain the oil out now and when we come back I'll show you how to fill that up and how to check your levels on that. With all the oil drained out of the headstock then, we can now begin to fill it up and to do so on my lathe, we've got a fill port here 
which is behind a cover on the back of the headstock. So a little good pointer here to note if you're going to be doing a service on your lathe and you've not actually done one before. I find when you drain the old fluid out, it's really good just to flush it through with a bit of new stuff with the drain bung still undone. That way it will flush through all the system and get rid of any crud left in the bottom of the system. So now I need to fill that up, keeping an eye on the sight glass, which is just under the spindle nose at the front of the headstock. So I believe this takes just about one litre of oil. So I've made a mark on the bottle of my start point. And now I'm just going to slowly trickle this in, try not to spill too much. And straight away it's gone everywhere. Brilliant. <laughs> you know what, I'm going to fill this up off camera because the camera being in the way is really awkward here. With the headstock oil all topped up to the maximum now, which we can see in this sight glass here, the last oil to change is the gearbox oil. So I believe the drain bung is in the back again here and we've just got the fill plug here. So I'm going to do exactly the same as what we've done before, drain the oil out, if it's looking a bit grimy flush it through a little bit with some new stuff and then just fill it up. So this doesn't take a lot at all, this is a very similar quantity to that of the carriage. So we'll get this done and then after that I think we're going to move on to doing the drive belts because that's a really important thing that needs changing on this lathe because one of them is in really poor condition. So I'm going to crack on with this and when I come back I think we'll crack on and start changing those belts over. That is some grimy oil. We'll definitely be flushing that through. Now that we've got all the fluids changed on the lathe, I want to point my attention to these drive belts. So this lathe works off a twin belt drive system and what that basically means is down here we've got the motor which powers the lathe and we've literally got a set of two belts which attach up to the headstock. So the problem I've got at the minute is one of these belts is really poorly perished and I think it's stretched as well because these are exactly the same belt, yet one is really slack and the other is fairly tight. I've checked the alignment before doing this video of the motor to the, or the two pulleys should I say, the motor pulley and the headstock pulley and they're both in line. So that tells me I've not got an alignment issue, I think I've probably just got an old warped belt. So that's the next thing I'm going to be doing is trying to swap these belts out. And originally I thought this was going to be a fairly easy job, but it turns out I might have to take the pulley and the brake system off to get these belts off. So that's not an issue, just a little bit more work. So because of the position of this, I'm probably going to have to do a few bits, come back, tell you what I've done, and then move on and do the next few bits, just because it's going to be really awkward to get the camera angle in here to show you guys what I'm doing. So to begin with, I'm just going to undo the bolts that hold the motor in place, and see if I can get these belts free of the pulleys. One eternity later. Oh, this job is a pig of a job. It's actually a bit more in depth than what I first thought, but I think we're now making progress. So I've undone the three bolts that hold the motor in position, and I've also undone the two bolts that sort of tension the belt. So I've now managed to lift the motor up, and we've got loads of slack on the belt. Now the next thing I've had to do underneath, I've had to undo part of the brake, which is this rod here, which when you engage it, it puts tension on this pulley here and also engages a switch which cuts the lathe off. So I've got enough play on there now and enough play on the belt, which I'm hopefully going to be able to get this belt off now. So let's give that a go. Well, like a lot of stuff, I tend to overcomplicate it. And this has been one of those times. So it actually turns out what you can do is this pin here, it's got a C-clip on the back. And with that C-clip removed, should 
be able to just pull that bolt out. And the brake pad has come out of there as well. And now without with that removed, should be able to slide these belts up and over this. He says. There we go. One, two. So got the old belts off now. Um, going to be a bit of reassembly. Tried getting a bit of that on video for you, but it basically is going to be a reverse of what I've done. I know I've not really captured a lot of this on camera, unfortunately. It's just been really awkward to get to, but I'm going to try giving you guys a bit more better look on the refit. Right then, everything's back together now and we've got some fairly nice tension on that belt and something I'm really happy about is where before the belts were like really uneven now because they're brand new belts we've got perfect balance on the sort of tautness of those belts so I'm really happy with that. I suppose really then, now we've got the belts done and we've got all the fluids changed we can run this lathe up and just see to make sure there's no unusual noises. So I'm going to run it up at a fairly slow speed. We'll go 370 RPM and we'll see what this lathe now sounds like. <laughs> belts look really smooth and we've got no unusual noises coming from the lathe, the gear side of it anyway, so that's really good. Generally then, I'm really happy at the minute how that lathe sounds, no weird noises and everything seems to be working as it should, so that's brilliant. Right then, that about sums up this video today then guys. Hope you've enjoyed watching me service the lathe and change some belts on it. And maybe if this is something that you need to do to your lathe, this video might just help you out. So it's nearly Christmas time, so I think I might drop a little Christmas special before the festive season starts. But over Christmas and New Year, I'm probably going to take it easy and just chill out. But when we come back in the New Year, I'm going to have a really interesting project that I need to do now I've got ownership of this new lathe. So until then guys, have a good Christmas if you don't watch my videos beforehand and I'll see you in the new year.